Hello everybody. Within this video, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, how do nested for loops work. So let's begin by actually going over how a for loop works alone. So there are many parts to the for loop. So if we have a couple of keywords. Uh, so for example, let's get started with the, the keyword for, which is going to initialize our loop. Okay. I is just basically, it's not necessarily a keyword, but it's a variable uh, name that it basically is going to have a copy of something okay it is not a whole even though you may you can think about it as a variable name it's not really holding a value but ha holding a copy of a value from somewhere okay the keywords in uh, usually used to check for something inside of somewhere so for example in the range of zero to nine in inside of numbers inside of s so anything else with a string you are able to check inside of it okay so for example right now when i i do this um print in a copy of whatever stored in the range of zero to nine and uh i'm making a reference to it through the variable called i so when i print it see all of these are just basically copies okay of what's being found here within the our range function Okay, if I were to do this, let's say it's the same thing within numbers. It's just printing out copies. Now doing no modification or anything. And I can do this for strings as well. And I, like I said, anything that has indexes, uh, any other data structure, you are able to do this with. Okay, um, so let's see, let's move on. And now let's start, well, let's go back to the range function. Let's keep it in at 10. All right, so now, Whenever you create your first outer for loop, then you will, you're gonna wanna create your inner loop. Uh, right now is a good time to practice uh, good programming habits, so you can always press enter, and usually the, prog the IDE is going to do the indentation for you, okay? I usually like to use a the tab key to make my indentations, because using the space is a little bit too small and not very readable and very hard to debug later on. So now I do 4J in the range of 10. And remember that this is just a variable name, I and J. These are just variable names. But the thing is though, for beginner programmers, um, you usually, whenever you see them in terms of I and in terms of J, they become a little bit very difficult to think of and to kind of like debug and you get a lot of semantics errors. You want it, uh, let's say, A, and you're getting in, in exchange B. So in order to avoid a lot of confusion, you also may see it as for row in range and then for column in range. Okay, And remember, these are just variable names, but it really does help um, putting them in this context. So let me show you how this works. So for right now, your outer loop and your inner loop if you want to know how many times this is going to repeat, you can just basically times whatever you have here with whatever you have in your outer loop to whatever you have in your inner loop. So when I run this, you see, I don't need to necessarily count all of this because I know that time 10 times 10 is going to be equal to 100. So I, in total, I printed a total of 100 things. So the way that it ex executes, however, is this. And again. So I'm gonna write the words N again. So you see that the first thing that's gonna always get executed is actually gonna be our outer loop. That's the first thing that goes. So it goes and again, and then we go inside of our um, inside of our um, inner loop, inner inner for loop, and then it's gonna execute all of those repetitions that are in there. In this case, the numbers from zero to nine, and then you see. And again, starts over again. That means that this is the second time that the outer for loop has uh, gone. Okay. And as you notice at the very ending, you actually get it at the very beginning. So it, and remember with all programming, a, all programming is, is sequential. So for example, if I were to do this, and instead of printing it before my for loop, I printed it after my for loop, my, my inner for loop then it's gonna read very differently. So let me go ahead and clear this out, run it again. Let me see, it's getting in there. There you go, and it's working now. So, hold on. 
there you go. So now it starts from my outer for loop goes inside of its body and it executes the inner for loop first. And then once it's finished executing it, it leaves this for loop and then it executes the words, the, the print statement uh, end again. Okay, so you see? So it really does matter where you put your next uh, coach statement. Okay, you need to keep that in mind. Lastly, what is very different from uh, Python that a lot of C style, C -style languages uh, have already is that, for example, um, the print function, you don't really have like a print in, on a new line. It just prints on a new line already automatically here in Python. In C style languages, you have something like, for example, uh, print or like print ln to create a new line. But here it automatically does it for you. And if you remember, uh, anything that turns yellow, at least within this, uh, when you have the dark, dark theme, theme in Replit, is basically a function. So print is a function. We tend to forget that. And we usually can pass certain types of values. We can pass strings, we can pass integers, doubles, booleans, and a lot of other different data types. Okay. But when we click on print, you may notice uh, on the bottom half, you notice that you find the words and, end. Okay. And says that basically is it this func it's an argument that this function is going to end with a new line. We can actually overwrite that. So instead, we can do something like end equals, and then this behaves a lot like a separator from the join block that we have seen before. When we run the program, see now everything's being printed inside of one new line. Okay. Even after we exit this for loop here and we go into this print statement, it doesn't create the new line until and again has been uh, placed inside of the console, and then after it just creates the new line, and it behaves like a regular uh, print statement. Okay, You can also add commas, and that's why I say that it adds very similar to a separator. You can add asterisks, see? And it behaves very, very much the same way. Thank you so much for watching, and um, I'm going to be leaving in the video's description a link to this uh, replit that is going to be giving you other examples that you can just remove them from the multi-line comments and just mess around with them. The only way to fully better understand uh, nested for loops is just to practice with them. Thank you so much for watching.